Hello everybody and welcome to your lesson on tricky trinomials. This is it. This is the big one. This is one of your most important lessons in your grade 10 math career. So let's make sure that you're making notes, writing down anything you don't understand so that you can ask your teacher and let's get ready. Last day, you factored simple trinomials, which were trinomials that started with a coefficient of 1. Tricky trinomials have a coefficient of something other than 1. As well, the a value cannot be equal to 0 either. Now, the first person that comes to me and says why your quadratic equation cannot have an a value of 0 will win a prize. So whenever the next class is, be it tomorrow, be it however many days from now, the first come first serve, the first person to tell me why your quadratic equation cannot have an a value of zero will win a candy. All right, so basically tricky trinomials, a value is some number other than one or zero. We factor tricky trinomials very differently than we factor simple trinomials. So. Make sure you're taking notes. We are no longer looking for two numbers that multiply to give you six, negative six. What you're going to do is take the a value and the c value and multiply them together, just like it says here. So we need two numbers that multiply to give us negative 12 and add to give us b. So in this case, b is equal to 1. So they have to add to give us b and multiply to give us what a times c is equal to. So we're going to find what two numbers multiply to give negative 12 and add to give 1. Now if you remember from your little cheat sheet on how to find these numbers from last day, if they multiply to a negative number, one of them has to be positive, one of them has to be negative. And if they add to a positive number, then the bigger number is positive. So to make 12, we've got 1 and 12. Bigger number would have to be positive, smaller number would have to be negative, but those don't make 1. We have 2 and 6. Smaller number has to be negative, but those don't make 1. We have 3 and 4. Smaller number has to be negative. Those two do add to 1. So those are your m and n values. Now, here's the trick. You do not put those numbers into brackets anymore. This is tricky trinomial folks, so it's not going to be as easy as just putting them into brackets. What you're going to do is, instead of writing 1x, you're going to write negative 3x plus 4x. So this is going to be equal to 2x squared minus 3x plus 4x minus 6. So you're going to split the middle term using the two numbers you found. So it's going to be mx plus nx. So your middle term gets split into two terms. That's why it's called decomposition, because we are decomposing. We're breaking down that middle term, right? It's kind of looking like the opposite of FOIL, right? All right, from here, because there's four terms, if you remember, we are now going to factor by grouping. So you put a box around the first two terms, and if you remember, to factor by grouping, you first pretend that the second two terms don't exist and you only look at the first two terms. What can you common factor out of 2x squared and negative 3x? The only thing that you can factor is 1x or just x. So we're going to common factor out an x and you'll be left with 2x minus 3. Now you look at the second two numbers 
And what can you common factor out of 4x plus 6? Well, my friends, that is a 2. So put a box around the second two terms. And you're going to common factor out a 2 from the, from the second two terms. And that leaves you with 2x minus 3. And if you remember, you want those two brackets to be exactly the same. So that's your common factor. So the first set of brackets is the common one, which is 2x minus 3. The second set of brackets is the scraps, stuff left over, which is x plus 2. All right, so you factor the four terms by grouping. Common factor the first two, common factor the last two. Remember that the two binomials in the brackets will be the same and then common factor the binomials in the brackets. If you wanted to check your answer, remembering factoring a trinomial is the opposite of FOIL. 2x times x is equal to 2x squared. 2x times 2 is equal to 4x. Negative 3 times x is equal to negative 3x. Negative 3 times 2 is equal to negative 6. And then when you collect like terms, 2x squared plus x minus 6. And that's what we had when we started with. Now you do not always have to do the check. And if you are going to do the check, please label it as check. You don't want to get your answer and then just foil it back out and then making it look like that's your answer. Or what you could do is you can just give me a nice big happy circle around your final answer. What I'm going to do is give you a little hint just to make your life a bit easier. If m or n is negative, so in this case m is negative but n is not, so you want only one of them to be negative, then put the negative number first. You don't have to, it just makes the math a little bit easier. So that means you would put the negative 3 before the positive 4. If you put the positive 4, then the negative 3, you'd still get the same answer, but you're a little more likely to make a mistake because then you'd have to remember to factor out the negative number. If m and n are both positive or both negative, then it doesn't really matter, but it's just a little bit easier for you if one of them is negative to put the negative 1 first. All right, let's do a couple more examples because I know that factoring tricky trinomials can be tricky. Here we go. You take your a, which is 2, you multiply it by your c, which is 5. So we're going to find two numbers that multiply to give you 10 and add to give you 11. So again, remembering your shortcuts, since they multiply to a positive number, that means m and n are going to have the same signs. Since they add to a positive number, m and n are both going to be positive. So let's start with the factors of 10. 1 and 10. Do they add up to 11? Well, yes they do. That means we can stop right away. We have our m and n. 1 and 10. That means our 11x gets split up into 1x and 10x. Or 10x and 1x, it doesn't matter. So after you find your m and n, split your middle term up into the m and n. Put a box around the first two terms and common factor. The only thing that you can factor out of those two is an x and you are left with 2x plus 1. Put a box around your second two terms 
and you know what you don't have to put the box around if you can do it in your head that's fine I usually just like putting the box around just to help remind me to keep things separate alright so 10x plus 5 has a common factor of 5 and that leaves you with 2x plus 1 and to get very excited our brackets are the same so our first factor is the common one 2x plus 1 our second bracket is made up of what's left over x plus 5 alright I'll do one more example with you and then you're gonna have some fun practicing on your own so take your a value and your c value multiply them 6 times 2 is 12 so we need numbers that multiply to give us 12 and add to give us negative 7. Using our shortcut they multiply to a positive number so the M and N have to be the same sign but since they add to a negative number M and N both have to be negative. So they could be negative 1 and 12 those don't add to negative 7. They could be negative 2 and negative 6 those don't add to negative 7. They could be negative 3 and negative 4 those add to negative 7. So your M and N are negative 3 and negative 4. So break the negative 7x into negative 3x minus 4x and box the first two. From those two terms you can common factor out a 3x and you are left with 2x minus 1. From the second set of brackets, or when you box the second two I mean, you can factor out, you got to factor out a negative because the first term is negative, so you can factor out a negative 2 and you are left with 2x minus 1. Hip hip hooray, our brackets are the same. So our final answer the first set of brackets is the common one. The second set of brackets is what's left over, 3x minus 2. Now, if these brackets are not the same, you've done something wrong. Either that or it's an expression that can't be factored. So if these brackets do not match, if they're not the same, please go back and check your answers. So on the next page you have example 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Lots of practice for you. Give them a try. Play the video whenever you need to to, you know, if, if you get stuck. Uh, so try those questions and play the video to check your answers after. So you're going to pause, try them yourself, make note of anything that you don't understand we're going to be practicing for a couple of days on this topic. So don't worry if you don't quite get it. So pause the video now, try those six examples, then come back to the video. All right, so let's check your answers. You probably want to pause the video at each of these little screenshots to check your answers. Make note of any that you need to go over with your teacher. Remember that uh, anytime you have a negative, you want to put the negative term first. So there's 4 and 5. Here's 6 and 7. Again, pause the video if you want to take a longer look at them. And here is 8 and 9. So we will be spending uh, the next day practicing this, and then the following day we'll just be practicing more and have a little quiz. So, hope you enjoyed factoring trinomials as much as I did. See you later. Bye-bye.